Hello YouTube, and welcome to this week's episode of Brainstorm, where we give you a glimpse into the world of science. This episode is a bit special, as six stories are covered spanning two weeks of news. Our first story is from the world of nanotechnology. Scientists from University of Colorado have developed a new method for lung cancer diagnosis. It's a device that uses gold nanoparticle sensors originally designed at Technion University to analyze exhaled breath. This can potentially diagnose people because lung cancer actually causes volatile organic compounds to be in the lungs. A study was recently done as a proof of concept for this new diagnostic test involving a control group and patients already known to have lung cancer. Not only did these nanoparticle sensors detect cancer-related compounds, but could even distinguish between cancer subtypes. This will drastically accelerate a doctor's ability to prescribe specific treatments for the kind of lung cancer. New ways of diagnosing lung cancer are really needed as a recent large-scale screening trial had almost a 95% rate of false positives. Next is a quick update from the world of medicine. Researchers at Mount Sinai School of Medicine in New York City may have solved the mystery of how pregnant women can sometimes spontaneously recover from heart weakness. They thought that the fetus might contribute some of its own stem cells to help heal the mother's heart, so they tested this out first on mice. Normal female mice were bred with mice genetically engineered to produce a fluorescent protein in all of their cells, thus making half the resulting fetuses glow. A heart attack was induced, and two weeks later, the hearts were analyzed. Just as they thought, glowing fetal stem cells had migrated from the placenta into the damaged heart of the mother. This discovery could potentially result in a promising source of effective stem cells for new treatments. Evidence of fetal stem cells in other organs have also been reported. And from the field of material science, researchers at UCLA have found a cheaper way to produce transparent electrodes used in many electronics. Most current transparent electrodes are made from indium tin oxide, these have grown increasingly expensive with rising indium prices. The new transparent electrodes are based on silver nanowires and have advantages other than cost. First, the nanowires are sprayed onto a surface and treated with a solution of titanium dioxide to create a composite film. The film is then coated with organic polymers to increase surface cohesion. This brings us to an interesting property of the silver-based electrodes. They're highly flexible. Meaning, these new transparent electrodes have a number of applications in flexible electronics and solar panels. We now turn to the world of abiogenesis. New research is suggesting a very different picture of the last universal common ancestor. The last universal common ancestor, aka LUCA, has been mentioned on Brainstorm before, when it was discovered that it most likely had a primitive organelle. Now, more study of proteins common to all life reveal more insight into LUCA, such as its ability to metabolize certain nutrients. Only a few membrane proteins were found to be universal, which means LUCA probably had a primitive leaky cell membrane, which leads us to the most interesting discovery. Evidence suggests that LUCA was RNA-based, not DNA-based, and freely exchanged proteins and other molecules between cells. You see, its protein-making machinery was so error-prone, every cell depended on this free exchange to survive, essentially making it one giant organism. As cells became more self-sufficient, this superorganism seems to have broken up almost three billion years ago. Our next story comes from the field of neuroscience with new and exciting technology for scanning the brain. This particular technology uses ultra-thin and foldable transistors to make a more compact array of thousands of sensors. So far, testing with animals has revealed new data involving brain activity during sleep and seizures, but will eventually analyze many neurological disorders in humans. Also important is the fact that this new thin sensor requires far less wires to operate, making it easier to implant. The potential for this kind of thin, foldable device goes beyond neuroscience. Some examples of uses are in pacemakers and other cardiac implants, as well as retinal and motor prosthetics. 
Finally, we end with another medical story. Scientists at UCLA have successfully generated cancer-fighting T-cells from blood stem cells. For these first experiments, they were targeting a certain kind of melanoma using the genes from a T-cell in a cancer patient. The blood stem cells were then engineered with the genes for a receptor specific to the melanoma, allowing them to produce the desired T-cells. After all this, the targeted melanoma was implanted in mice containing the engineered stem cells, resulting in a promising immune response. In four of the nine mice, the targeted melanoma was eliminated with the remaining showing decreased tumor size. Obviously, the results from this kind of treatment are preliminary, but it'll hopefully enter clinical trials for this specific cancer soon. Well, hope you enjoyed this very special episode of Brainstorm. If you did, please consider subscribing and be sure to check the links in the video description.